What's going on? Ryan Troy back with another video for you today. And in this video, we will be talking about the AD 200 Pro or the Evolve 200 Pro. Same product, just different branding. The AD 200 Pro is among everybody's favorite list as far as beginning entry level strobes and for good reason. Before it was only really compared to speed lights for doing off camera flash, being able to push out almost three times as much than a traditional speed light made it a must have. But since then, other companies have replicated this strobe, making some that's a little bit better and some that's a little bit worse at different price points. For instance, Godox released earlier this year the AD100 Pro, which was supposed to sit between uh, Godox V1 and the AD200. Now, for me personally, I wasn't a fan of the AD100. I didn't see a place for it in the market. Um, I have a Godox V1. I also have the 200 Pro. So having that 100 didn't really make sense falling in between those two products. Now, Godox also released another product that sits between the AD200 Pro and the AD400 Pro being the AD300 Pro. Now, I feel like this product gets a bad rep, but when you compare it to the AD200 and the AD400, I think it's a no brainer on why this should be the best entry level flash. Let's start with high speed sync. One of the things that make the AD200 such a great strobe to have is being able to use high speed sync outside, being able to expose for the ambient light while you brighten up your subject to get the perfect photo that looks like you don't even have to do any editing to it at all is an advantage. And at that point when the AD200 started really coming around, we didn't have that portable option, especially that was as light as it was and cheap because the AD200 compared to let's say pro photo flashes are pretty cheap. But if it's one thing that the AD200 doesn't really do too good with high speed sync is its recycle time. Let's see if you can notice something here. Now I have the AD200 on the left and the AD300 on the right. Pay attention to the recycle time. The recycle time is how long you can take a photo before you can take the next shot and the flash go off. When the light is red, that's when it's ready to take a shot. If you take a shot before seeing this red light, the flash will not go off. Now I'm gonna speed this up a little bit so you can see what starts to happen. Now, as you can see, the AD200 is taking way longer to recycle as the AD300. I have both of these strobes on half power so I don't stress them too much. So the AD200 is shooting at about 100 watts and the AD300 is shooting at about 150 watts. But the AD200 is lagging far behind. If you want a portrait session, this can cost you the perfect shot. And it's not because of the size of the battery. They both take the same battery. But note, although you can use the same battery on the AD200, it will protrude out a little bit more. And on the AD300, it will stick in more. Is it a way to combat long recycle time? Sure, put an ND filter on your lens and don't shoot in high speed sync. Now keep in mind when doing this, you wanna make sure you have a good ND filter as far as quality. Otherwise, you won't have the potential that your lens is allowed to give you. Let's move on to size. Sure, the AD200 is smaller than the AD300, but not by that much. And when you compare it to the AD400 size and weight, it's clear to see that both options are better in the compact department. In fact, I usually bring both of these strobes and keep them in my camera bag. With both of these strobes, you can use an S2 adapter to adapt it to fit to Bowen's mounts, but there's another advantage that the AD300 has, which is the built-in mount for the Godox mount. The AD400 comes with this mount as well as a Bowens mount, so it's no need for you to bring that adapter, which would just get in your way or you might forget at home. Lately, I've been bringing my camera bag, my light stand, and my 33-inch Godox mount deep parabolic softbox in my wagon. It is so light and portable. I can carry this stuff without the need of using my wagon, but I'm lazy and I prefer to just wheel everything along. Well, why would you start with an AD300 instead of just going straight to the AD400? 
Well, one of the biggest things would be price. It's a big price difference. I really can't say anything bad about the AD400. It's a great light. You can make it your field light. You can make it your main light. It has a way bigger battery than the AD300 has, but the thing about it is it's just way heavier. It is not as portable. You will feel yourself bringing around the AD400. So if you don't really care about price and you don't really care about portability, then yes, go ahead on and go with the AD400. I think it's a phenomenal light. I still bring that light with me as well, but the AD300 is just way more compact. I don't even really use the AD300 at its full power. I'm usually somewhere between 1 8th, 1 4th, or half power. So if I'm barely using the full potential of the AD300, the AD400 at sometimes could just be overkill. But you can shoot longer with it, being that the AD400 has a way bigger battery. Let's go back to the high speed sync issue with the AD200 with the recycling time. It comes down to an overheating issue. So it's not that the battery is draining, it's more of it's not being able to keep cool enough for the flash to fire again. Remember, they take the same battery. Do you see these openings right here? This is how the AD200 circulates air. And this right here is how the AD300 circulates air. So although it may appear that it's only 100 more watts, it's also being able to use the flash more. Look here at how the AD300 is shooting in high speed sync with five frames per second. The flash did not miss a beat. This would have never happened with the AD200. In fact, it probably would have overheated faster. Keep in mind, I did this test inside in a controlled environment. Imagine if I was outside doing the same test in 80 to 90 degree weather. I said all that to say this, the AD300 is by far one of my favorite lights. I've been shooting with it since February. I think if you are wanting to get into off camera flash, this is the light, this is the first light you should get. And even if you're already into it, you still should get it just for the portability factor. If you're gonna be going around shooting all day in different locations, this light will serve you purpose. I would say the AD400, if you're gonna be in one spot and you needed all of that power. As I said before, I barely use this strobe at full power. Now I have an affiliate link. I don't want you to think that this video is sponsored or anything, but if you're interested in this strobe, there's a link in the description. Um, Godox did not pay me to say any of this, uh, but I do feel like a lot of people don't talk a lot about the AD300 and they really try to get people to go to the AD200 when the AD300 is a very great strobe. So with that being said, if you like this video, make sure you leave it with a like. If you're new here, this channel is all about photography. Go ahead on and subscribe for more content and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.